I was reading a cybersecurity story about how Facebook helps the FBI hack a child predator. So Facebook reportedly paid a cybersecurity firm six figures to develop a zero-day exploit against Tails to identify a man who extorted and threatened girls. So I'm going to use a couple of sources in this. So this news article is from Motherboard and Vice.com. And I'll also be looking at the court documents. So this is the arrest warrant for United States of America versus Buster Hernandez. I won't be reading much of this document because it's uh, rather horrific, really. Although it's uh, obviously available to the public now, it's not something I want to read out on a YouTube video. However, the workings of what has happened is uh, certainly quite interesting, really, although it's uh, not fully detailed. So on December 17th, 2015, a request was made to Facebook for records related to a Facebook account of Brian Kill. Facebook responded with the following information and the IP address there, well, they believed was registered to anonymous proxy, but it turned out to be Tor. So based on my training experience, I know that proxy server works as a sort of middleman between a personal computer and the internet. In practice, anonymous proxies are used to hide information about a person's personal computer so they can browse the web anonymously. Further research revealed that this IP address was used as a Tor access node on December the 16th, 2015. And I'm not going to read out any of those messages, but let's go back to the news article. So for years, a California man systematically harassed and terrorized young girls using chat apps, email and Facebook. He extorted them for, well, they're going to be underage pictures and videos and threatened to kill and, yeah, and threatened them in other rather horrific ways. Buster Hernandez, who was known as Brian Kill online, was such a persistent threat and so adept at hiding his real identity that Facebook took the unprecedented step of helping the FBI hack him to gather evidence that led to his arrest and conviction. Muffboard has learned that Facebook worked with a third-party company to develop an exploit and did not directly hand the exploit to the FBI. Okay, I can read that part of the court document and I will do later in the video. But it certainly appears that the FBI is well aware of what they were handling and its capability. So Hernandez used Tails, which runs the anonymizing software Tor. Using this tool, he contacted and harassed dozens of victims on Facebook for years until 2017. The operating system is widely used by journalists, activists and dissidents who are under the threat of being surveilled by police and governments. A spokesperson for Tales said it is used daily by more than 30,000 activists, journalists, domestic violence survivors and privacy concerned citizens. And I've used it myself to do analysis of phishing websites, so it certainly does have its uses. Hernandez was so notorious within Facebook that employees considered him the worst criminal to ever use the platform. Wow, way to uh, big it up a bit. So two former employees told Motherboard that according to these sources, Facebook assigned a dedicated employee to track him around for two years and developed a new machine learning system designed to detect users creating new accounts and reaching out to kids in an attempt to exploit them. The system was able to detect Hernandez and tie different pseudonym accounts and their respective victims to him. Well, they're a private company and can do what they want. Several FBI field officers were involved in the hunt and the FBI made a first attempt to hack and de-anonymize him but failed, as the hacking tool they used was not tailored for tails. Hernandez noticed the attempted hack and taunted the FBI about it, according to two former employees. The firm worked with a Facebook engineer who wrote the program and would attach an exploit taking advantage of the flaw in Tails video player to reveal the real IP address of the person viewing the video. So it's interesting they went after the video player. Now the video was shared through Dropbox and, and if we take a look at Tails, the video player in use, well at least the video player in use in 2020, is the GNOME video player. It is not VLC which would be one of the more popular video players but but with the GNOME desktop, it could be that Totem would be a popular alternative. Now, I suppose uh, another thing is if you're using the DVD install version, so you're not actually writing it to a computer, then uh, yeah, this is the only choice of video player that you're going to get. The Facebook Tom of board it doesn't specialize in developing hacking exploits and did not want to set the expectation with law enforcement that this is something it would do regularly. Facebook says that it identified the approach that would be used but did not develop the specific exploit and only pursued the hacking option after exhausting all other options. Okay, well, we can uh, 
read what we want into that, but um, yeah, there's not really much else about what specifically they did in the news article. And going back across the court document on page 29, paragraph 51, so the law enforcement identifies Brian Kill's true IP address. So on the 9th of June 2017, the Honourable Deborah McVicker Lynch authorised the execution of the network network investigative technique, NIT, in order to ascertain the IP address associated with Brian Kill and victim 2. As set forth in the search warrant, the FBI was authorised by the court to add a small piece of code, NIT, to a normal video file produced by victim 2, which did not contain any visual depictions of any minor engaged in, yeah, that sort of explicit activity. As authorised, the FBI then uploaded the video file containing the NIT to Dropbox account known only to Kill and Victim 2. When Kill viewed the video containing the NIT on the computer, the NIT would disclose a true IP address associated with a computer in use. So that seems to be how it was done for a video file sent via Dropbox. So not necessarily anything directly on Facebook, although as we've seen the exploit seems to have been made by Facebook, it's just not detailed in the court document. And there's no mention as to whether that vulnerability has been patched in Tails, or although I suppose thinking wider it should be that vulnerability patched in the GNOME desktop. So a bit of a weird one really, I know this is a Facebook private company, they can do what they want, but um, taking matters into their own hands, yeah, sure do it to catch a monster, but on the flip side, what's to say they can't do that to anyone else they wanted to? Anyway, that was a little bit of cybersecurity news. Thanks for watching. See you all later.